what are six marks of a true religion? Of course, everything depends on the word true. Uh, when I grew up, there was only one mark of a true religion. It's the one that would get you to heaven as opposed to hell. And there was only, coincidentally, one of those, and it was ours. Uh, uh, I, I'd like to talk about what that word true means, but I'll save that uh, till the end. I think the first mark of a true religion is that it helps us get in touch with ourselves. It helps us deal with our own issues. You know, self-management is one of the tougher things we do in life. We're all this bundle of drives and desires and fears and pride and ego and terror. And uh, if a religion doesn't help us deal with our own stuff and maybe help us become a little better, a little more mature, a little less dangerous people, I, I don't think we'd want to call it a uh, true religion. Uh, as soon as it helps us do that as individuals, we human beings tend to come wrapped in families. And it seems to me a true religion helps us function and deal well with families. One of the things that human beings have to do every uh, generation is they have to reproduce. So religions help parents manage being parents and raising decent children who can deal with the first issue, and that is become better individuals. We have to deal with our elderly, helping our elderly relatives. That whole business of managing generation to generation health and vitality and well-being, it seems to me, is one of the things that a true religion does. Uh, third, a true religion builds some sense of community and some sense of meaning and identity for the group of people who share that religion. Uh, so to be a Christian, to be a Muslim, to be a Hindu, whatever tradition we're part of, it seems to me, a religion has to give some sense of meaning to that and help that meaning evolve and change over time, which sometimes religions uh, really struggle with. So we help us connect with ourselves. We help us connect with families. Uh, religions help us connect with our past, our tradition as a religion, our present, where we are as a religion now. And we'd also say they, they help us connect with our future in our religious community. That seems to me to be a third essential function of a true religion. Of course, there are a whole lot of people who are not part of our religion. And so the fourth characteristic of a true religion is it has to help us relate to people who aren't part of the religion. Again, sometimes our religions do a better job of this and a worse job. And sometimes our religions create little uh, isolated ghettos where the only people we meet who are part of our religion, but we become aware that there are people who aren't part of it. How does our religion prepare us to connect with humanity? One of the great struggles of religions in our century is coming to terms with all the people who aren't part of our religion and don't want to be. Fifth, really important in this century, a true religion, it seems to me, helps us connect with creation. That begins with helping us appreciate creation. Uh, sadly, sometimes in the past, our religions have helped us and given us a license to exploit creation. But we're at a point in history when a true religion has to help us reconnect with the grass and the soil and the earth under us, with the air and the wind, the climate around us, with uh, the sky above us, with all of the other living creatures. If a religion doesn't place us in the cosmos in a responsible and healthy way to connect with what's around us, it seems to me it's not doing its job. And of course, uh, that leaves one essential function of a true religion, which would be to help us connect with God. You might wonder why I didn't put that first. But I sometimes think that a good definition of God is that largest framing reality through which we connect with ourselves, our family, our religious community, all of the rest of humanity, and all of creation. And so to develop those kinds of connections, it seems to me, it's really essential for any true religion, which brings us back to that word true. You know, uh, uh, if we let true mean authentic or genuine or what religion is supposed to be, I think we have a clue in the word religion itself. Re-lig, you know that word lig from ligament. Re-lig says that we human beings are prone to fragmentation. We're, we're prone to division. We're prone to dislocation. And, and we have the sense that we need things to keep 
We need something to keep bringing us back together. We need to defrag our own internal software. We need to somehow get ourselves reunited. Don't we all have civil wars going on in ourselves? Shame and guilt and fear that ravages us, lust and greed and hate that ravages us. So we have this re-ligamenting that has to happen so that we become more and more whole. And of course, any of us who lived in a family, we know our families can fragment and disintegrate in a thousand different ways. We need that help to reconnect. And in our religious communities, and in humanity as a whole, and as we feel in this century more than ever with creation itself, and in that ultimate sense then, to re-ligament, reconnect, find our deepest sense of belonging and identity with the creator who reconnects everything. Thank you.